Hello, everyone. This is Bryna Block from the San Diego Center for AIDS Research. And today we're talking about our, some of our developmental grant recipients and some of the successes that they've had as a result of their developmental grant research. Today, we have the honor of speaking with Dr. Nadezhda Belyakova Bethel, who is an assistant professor of medicine at the University of California, Division of Infectious Diseases and Global Public Health, as well as a research biologist at the VA San Diego Healthcare System. Dr. Belyakova Bethel is also associate director of the Genomics and Sequencing Corps for the San Diego Center for AIDS Research. Over the years, Dr. Belyakova Bethel has received two SDC-FAR developmental grants, and I'd like if you, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about each of them. Okay, so I, I got two grants, as Brian mentioned. Uh, the first grant was uh, a while ago, and back then I was a really green independent researcher. I wasn't sure what I was doing and how to do this. Uh, however, I had a great idea that I wanted to generate preliminary data for and be more convincing when applying for my big five-year career developmental award. And this grant really helped me to achieve that. So I had some data that was generated to provide the proof of concept. Uh, and then I could also use it as preliminary data, in particular, we wanted to look at uh, the, the host factors that um, play a role in HIV reactivation from latency. And um, we had used several latency reversing agents that turn on different pathways. And we looked at uh, similarities and differences that um, were um, observed upon treatment with this uh, agents in CD4 T cells of different maturation subsets, including naive central memory and defective memory. And then uh, I subsequently received a career developmental award from the VA for five years uh, to follow up on that and deep, dig deeper into the mechanisms of reactivation from latency. And then my second award um, in 2018 was um, about developing and establishing the protocols for um, single cell RNA seq. I investigated it for a while. I looked at different manufacturers who developed those technologies, and um, I ended up using deciding to use 10x because it's high throughput, which is really important when you want to study HIV reservoir, which is a rare event. So uh, I got this developmental grant to sort of try out the protocol, to use it in conjunction with my specific questions that required a little bit of tweaking. And um, I generated a lot of data that I'm still trying to sort through and <laughs> uh, it's a lot, but I not only I learned how to use the technology and establish the protocol in my hands, but I also generated some proof of concept data, preliminary data, how to, uh, to about the, the molecular signatures of the latent reservoir. And my idea was that actually the signature may be different depending on what the cell is. Again, I started looking at maturation phenotypes, naive versus memory cells. Um, and uh, there were some different um, genes that, uh, could uh, discriminate latently infected cell from uninfected one in this different subset. And so that resulted in getting this um, merit review award from the VA. I used this data as proof of concept as well as just preliminary data section in the grant, which was really successful. I also used it in um, an R1 application, which was pretty successful, but it was right about where payline is. And so they funded me as R56. But again, this uh, CIFAR development grant was very instrumental in moving my research forward, solidifying my ideas and uh, building up on my initial ideas, how to make them stronger, how to adjust to what I actually saw in the data. So that was awesome. And also there is so much data generated that, as I mentioned, 
that we're looking at. So we had two publications from the first CIFA development for grant, and now I am processing this data and we're looking probably at, you know, at least two or three papers from the second development program. So I think in terms of career developmental, career development for me, this opportunity was really very important and one of the key factors that moved my career forward. So my, thank you very much for sharing about your CIFAR developmental grants. So a question for you, you have been with UC San Diego since your postdoctoral days, and now you are an associate director of one of our CIFAR cores, the genomics and sequencing cores. How have your SD CIFAR developmental grants contributed to your professional advancement, your career success as a, an academic researcher and professor? Right, so um, when I was, um, when I joined the UCSDS postdoc, I joined it in the lab of Dr. Christopher Welk, who was at the time the director of genomics core. And the goal of my postdoctoral training was to gain uh, uh, knowledge of data analysis, a little bit of bioinformatics, high throughput data analysis. We started back then in 2009 um, with um, analyzing microarray data sets, and then that sort of segue into using RNA-seq as that technology developed. And again, as technology was developing, we started using bulk RNA-seq with RNA isolated from a mixture of cells, which we did. Um, we, we were able to obtain some interesting results that kind of facilitated uh, my thinking about the problem and how we can maybe better address it, um, but also some preliminary, preliminary data in terms of how the latent reservoir may be different from an infected cells, even from the bulk data sets. So, but again, this is just, um, I think, um, it was a very long progress for me to arrive at that point. And again, when I got this idea that we should do single cell analysis, you know, at the single cell level to look at the reservoir cells, the second C for developmental grant was really instrumental to move it forward because uh, I think I was the first one at C for here who tried out this technology and then could introduce it to other researchers, share my data, share my thinking and just tell people this is great, we should use it. And so a lot of people became interested. And so when I became uh, associate director of the genomics and sequencing core, I've been working with a lot of people who wanted to try it out and I've been helping them to uh, sort of design the experiments, um, work with them to optimize the sample preparation so that they, are, they can generate good data from that. So. Again, having, having the CIFAR development grant was very helpful for me in order to achieve that. Thank you very much. And as I recall your VA merit award, I might have this mistaken, but one, it's the equivalent of an R01? Yes, it's uh, the equivalent of R01 with the caveat that R01 is five years and this merit is four years, but um, it's about the same amount of funding per year. Thank you. Okay, so you've received two developmental awards and um, several um, subsequent funding awards, and you've had a few papers published and a few more papers in the pipeline. What advice would you have for new SDC FAR developmental grant applicants? Well, the first thing I would recommend is really think about your project uh, and how whatever you propose to do is going to help you get independence. So I know there are some people who try to get these developmental grants just to get training in grant writing and maybe they just need a little bit of extra funding um, to bridge themselves from you know, being supported by the PI to their first big developmental award. 
But I think the key here is to have a good idea uh, that you can generate real data that can help you in the next step. Um, so if you're just trying to um, get funded something that you're already working on, or your PI was working on, it may not be as useful. So get something new uh, that you can try out. It's really worth, and it's enough money to just try as a pilot study on something new. And then you can use it as proof of concept and as well as preliminary data for your bigger grant. And my second advice is to really start thinking about these things early um, and not just, okay, I got email from CIFAR. We have available funds in one month. And I think you just have to develop your idea for a while <laughs> to, to make meaningful um, results out of this. Thank you. Did you work with mentors on either of your developmental grants? Yeah, I worked with my mentors. I, um, with Chelsea Spina, she's a great lady. She um, bridged me uh, a little bit uh, when I got my uh, Creative Developmental Award scores and they were not quite good the first time over. So uh, I actually didn't have any of my own funding and she bridged me for a while and she really mentored me to both in the scientific area, certain things that I still needed to know about how to study HIV reservoirs, as well as career development. Like she really gave me advice how to prepare your grant, the thinking process, also how to talk to other people. It's an importance of having other mentors in your life and the mentor can be performing different roles. It can Some person can be a scientific mentor, some can be a developmental mentor. And there are some people just with whom you can bounce around your ideas and that's all helpful. So I, I learned a lot from her about how to navigate the grant system and uh, a lot of also her writing style. We worked with her on many applications together and I really learned a lot from her about how to formulate my ideas, how to present them and um, how to write a successful application, so to speak. Yeah, that's, that's lovely to hear. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, other uh, grant recipients that I've interviewed have talked about their relationships with their mentors. And it seems to be as important to have a good relationship with your mentor as it is to have a good scientific idea. So thank you for sharing your own experience. 